Welcome to CSET Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. The last time you saw me, we were talking about preparation for biology and human and social biology. Too. That went extremely well. None of our students complained about the exam. It's just the things that we decided uh, to study. And of course, we followed the broad topic to include the water cycle. We did look at that. Studied. Now, there are a lot of questions around paper 032 as an alternative to practical or biology paper. Now, I'm happy to say that we are offering a course to those persons who are doing the alternative to practical paper. We are going to be having a camp for that, like we had a camp for two. That went well. If you know the schedule we had for that camp, it was uh, started pretty much in the morning at five, went to seven, uh, then we break and we resumed at nine, went to two, and then we started again at seven at night and it went up to between seven and ten. And then the other morning for that week it ran right until seven o'clock that day of the examination. Now, like I said, it went really, really well, and we have no doubt that we are ready for those persons who want to partake in our alternative to practical short course or crash course, it will be. And of course, those persons who want to be with us for the multi-dice marathon that pretty much started last week, it is open. Now, you are going to be seeing the price somewhere on the screen, this side or that side. It's going to be on the screen as soon as you have this public official out. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing with you now, uh, just before I go, I'm going to be sharing with you some possible labs that might be on your paper zero. So first, I'm going to be sharing with you a lab from photosynthesis. Then I'm going to be sharing a lab with you from germination. And lastly, I'm going to be sharing an animation with you for the protein. All these labs are animation and they are on our teachable platform, you can pretty much form. look at the curriculum. Now the curriculum, or here we have, we should have a screen on the screen. So, so if you are interested in our paper 032 for biology or the alternative for practical for biology, you can pretty much sign up at the number going across the screen. If you are interested in the multiple choice, you are going to be using the same number on the screen. Let me do a little bit for you. I am Mr. Wilson from CSET Biology TCP. You can find us online at tcp-teachable.com. You can also find us on YouTube at CSET Biology TCP. We are offering a short course on alternative to practical for biology. SBA for those persons who have not done the SBA, but they have done the practical. I'm going to be sharing with you now some videos that are some labs that might be breaks. So let's sit with us as we go through. Remember to dial the number on the screen if you have interest. It will be product. Carrying out steps to determine if chlorophyll is really needed for photosynthesis. If chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis, the white areas of a leaf will not return a positive test for starch. Plants produce glucose in photosynthesis. However, some convert and store it as starch. Hence, the lack of chlorophyll will prevent the production and storage of starch in affected areas of the leaf. Please follow the steps in the experiment to reach a conclusion. Section A. Chlorophyll traps sunlight. Section B. Lack chlorophyll in the white areas of the leaf. Section C. Leaf immersed in boiling water for at least 10 minutes, then removed and placed in boiling tube. Bunsen burner provides the flame. Section D. Boiling tube contain leaf 
and ethanol placed in a hot water bath for at least 10 minutes. No flame is required for this step. Ethanol removes chlorophyll from the leaf, leaving the leaf crispy and with a lighter color. Section E. Leaf immersed in water after removing from ethanol. Leaf becomes soft again. Section F. Iodine added to the leaf. The white areas took the color of the iodine. The rest of the leaf took a blue-black color. Blue-black indicates a positive test for starch. Let me slow down this experiment. So chlorophyll is that part of a leaf contained in the chloroplast. Its chief responsibility is to trap the light energy from the sun. A variegated leaf is usually a leaf that has more than one color usually green, white, or green, and a lighter color. For section C, we had immersed one of this type of leaf in boiling water. There you can see the beaker, and the beaker is on a tripod stand with a Bunsen burner, and you can see the flame going there. The water is being boiled. In section D, the leaf is immersed in a boiling tube. Now, this boiling tube contains ethanol and it is placed in a water bath because water boils at 100 degrees Celsius while ethanol would boil at somewhere 78 degrees Celsius. Hence, if the boiling tube were supposed to be placed over open flame, there would be a high possibility that we would have a fire causing an accident in your lab. Section E, the leaf is placed in water as the leaf was very crispy having been removed from the ethanol. Then the leaf was placed on a white tile in section F where iodine was added to the leaf. The white areas took the red brown color of the iodine indicating that there was no starch present in the white area. However, the other areas of the plant changed color to blue-black. A blue-black indicates a positive test for starch. Hence, for this experiment, based on our result, it is clear that chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis. Thanks much for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And when you do, remember to hit that notification bell. Pick the food test skills that can be tested ORR, MM, and AI. Teachers are reminded that only two skills are to be assessed for any experiment. The aim is as stated, apparatus, material, and reagents, they are color-coded below. A positive test for protein is purple, lavender, or violet. To carry out this experiment, it's very important for us to gently shake the tubes. We're going to be using three drops of sodium hydroxide, three drops of copper sulfate per solution, Solutions being used, 5 ml milk solution, pea solution, egg albumin solution, and glucose, as is written below the tubes. Let's start the experiment. We're testing for protein. It's called the Buret test. That's the first drop of sodium hydroxide. Second drop of sodium hydroxide. third drop of sodium hydroxide. Now we'll be adding the copper sulfate. First drop of copper sulfate. Second drop of copper sulfate. 
and there you observe the color change into purple third drop of copper sulfate and we'll shake the tubes gently you would have observed the milk solution has changed to purple the pea solution has changed to purple the egg albumin has also changed to purple the glucose solution however took the blue color of the copper sulfate now we have to record this information in a table this lab is the only lab required by CXC to be written in a table a table must have a descriptive title which is usually written above the table in uppercase and underline so here we have table showing results from protein tests or the buret tests the table should have a header row and a header column here we have the row here we have the column the unit should not be repeated in the cell and of course cells are not supposed to be left blank where there is a blank cell there should be a hyphen in that cell so that data will not be entered by error so this is an example of what is expected in the write-up the milk solution we use three drops of copper sulfate three drops of sodium hydroxide the observation is that this particular uh, solution changed to purple and our conclusion and discussion which is captured in the inference is that protein is present in this mixture thanks much for watching please be reminded to like share and subscribe when you do remember to hit that notification bell and select all so you will be informed a seedling or a growth of embryo out of a tester. There are two types of germination, hypogeal and epigeal germination. In hypogeal germination, the cotyledon stays below the ground, as is seen with monocotyledonous plant, example corn. In epigeal germination, here the cotyledons come above the ground. It is seen in dicotyledonous plant, example our peas and beans germination requires water suitable temperature and oxygen water is used for hydrolysis and to activate enzymes suitable temperature ensures optimum enzyme activity while oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration in the experiment we will examine the conditions needed for germination to carry out the experiment we will need to sterilize all the apparatus being used so as to ensure there is no foreign organism we will need boiling tubes seeds cotton rubber bung black paper ice pack or refrigerator tape to label and we're going to need pyrogallic acid and sodium hydroxide let's look at the experiment germination should not be mistaken for growth the growth of a plant will require sunlight the growth or germination of a seedling does not require sunlight germination could take place above ground below the ground in the sun or in the absence of sun germination does not require light so in the process we are observing here that boiling tube a has water cotton seed and it is in a bright warm place we have seen germination and, of course, growth of the seedling. Test tube B is in an ice pack or could be placed in a refrigerator. It has wet cotton, seeds, ice, cotton, and, of course, it's in a dark condition. Test tube C has wet cotton, seeds, and it, too, is in a dark condition. Test tube D contains pyrogallic acid and sodium hydroxide in a bright warm condition it is important to note that the cotton in this boiling tube is also wet 
Important to note, however, pyrogallic acid and sodium hydroxide is used in this experiment to remove oxygen from this environment. Test tube E is used as a control. The cotton is dry. A control is that part of the experiment that is used to verify the result. The outcome with the control is normally known, hence it forms a suitable gauge to the experiment. I hope that you did look at the experiment, but if you'd miss out on the experiment, we will go through the experiment again. So this is what the setup looked like. And here we go into the experiment to see what actually happened. There we have germination. Roots growing below the soil or below the cotton. Then we have sprouting of the shoot. It's growing there, showing some amount of growth. Shoot is growing. And the root is growing below the cotton there, uh, but you are unable to see it. Now, we are now supposed to determine what happened in the container B and C. Let's remove the cartridge. Wow! Look at that. The container with the ice did not show any sign of germination and this is because the temperature was not suitable for germination it was too low and would not allow the enzymes to operate we however observe that in boiling tube a germination took place as the condition was favorable it had water suitable temperature and of course oxygen in test tube c it had no light However, that did not stop the process of germination as it had water suitable temperature and, of course, oxygen. In test tube D, no germination took place as there was no oxygen present in the tube so as to enable respiration. In test tube E, as is expected, there is no germination because there was no water there to act activate the enzyme or for hydrolysis here we have the experiment completed we are supposed to now complete our observation by filling out a table so we know a germinated we know c germinated i do hope you were watching the video if you did not see the conditions and what germinated please go through the video again Pay attention to what is written below the tubes and that will help with your observation and, of course, discussion. So here we have the table partially completed. You're supposed to look at your experiment and complete the table. So for those parts that the condition was present, you're going to put a tick and the parts where it was absent, of course, you, you're going to put a X. The conclusion for this lab is that water, suitable temperature, and of course oxygen is needed for the process of photosynthesis. Thanks much for watching. Please be reminded to like, share, and subscribe. And when you do, remember to hit that notification bell so you'll be informed.